हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होप यू ऑल आर गुड एट होम सो वेलकम बैक टू योर नेक्स्ट बायोलॉजी क्लास नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट नेक्स्ट चैप्टर चैप्टर नंबर सिक्स व्हिच इज सीड्स स्ट्रक्चर एंड जर्मिनेशन इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर यू हैव स्टडीड नाउ पॉलिनेशन एंड फर्टिलाइजेशन एंड यू ऑल नो दैट आफ्टर फर्टिलाइजेशन ओवरी फॉर्म्स द फ्रूट एंड ओव्यूल फॉर्म्स द सीड now basically in structure of seed a seed has three main parts first of all you should remember that seed is developed from the ovule after fertilization ovule forms the seed and ovary forms the fruit so if we see any of the seed suppose this is one of the seed bean seed or the seed of the pulses then you will find that seed all the seeds have three common things one is a protective covering these protective coverings which we call them membranes as testa outer covering and in most of the seeds there is an inner covering which is called tegmen testa and tegmen both these coverings are actually the integuments which we have studied in the ovule the covering of ovules which we called integuments now form the covering of the seeds testa and tegmen the most important part lies here that is the embryo you all have studied that one of the male nucleus fuses with egg cell inside the ovule to form the embryo zygote and zygote forms the embryo so embryo the second main part and this whole is the nutritive tissue the nutritive tissue it may be in the form of stored nutritive tissue either in the form of cotyledons cotyledon is that part of the seed which stores the food or in some seeds it is present as endosperm you have studied that in angiosperms in flowering plants we have studied that the second male nucleus fused with the central cell as triple fusion and it will later form the endosperm so endosperm is also the nutritive tissue which is going to give nutrition to the growing embryo when it forms the seedling so basically there are three main parts of the seed the coverings the membranes the embryo and the stored food which is in the form of cotyledons or endosperm fine now in your book they have explained first of all what is a seed so before we talk about germination of seeds it will be appropriate to refresh your knowledge what the three terms fruit seed and grain actually mean fruit is the enlarged ripened ovary all of you know this is the enlarged ripened ovary now it has become fruit and the wall of the ovary forms the wall of the fruit we now call it pericarp the ovarian wall forming the fruit wall enclosing the seed inside there is seed and thus i told you the ovule wall will form the wall of the seed seed is ripened ovule it contains embryo which develops into new plant the seed coat protects the embryo from the mechanical damage and the third term you must have read about grain grain is that seed in which the fruit and the seed wall is fused what did i say that suppose this is the fruit the fruit wall and the seed wall they are fused together to form a protective layer we call it seed coat see grain as found in maize wheat etc is actually the fruit in which the fruit wall and the seed coat are fused together to form a protective layer the wall of the fruit and the wall of the seed is joined is fused to form a protective layer then we will call it grain is it clear then uh, more about seed you all know that seed is mature ovule after fertilization it contains as i told you embryo embryo will lie in dormant uh, form it will remain dormant till it gets the favorable conditions all the stored seeds we can store the seeds for a long time like in our kitchen we have so many lentils we have the seeds of grams and pulses and beans 
so we have stored them if we give them proper conditions like uh, temperature and soil and water and oxygen then these dormant embryo will become active and it will result in seedling now the next topic is classification and structure of seed now first is classification this classification is based upon two kinds one is you all have studied these terms earlier also that if the seeds have only one cotyledon then it is called monocotyledon maybe monocotyledon and dicotyledon monocotyledon seeds contain one cotyledon for example maize and dicotyledon seeds contain two cotyledons like uh, once i have shown you also in class 8 when you you today you can uh, soak some seeds and then after they get swelled up properly the pulses the or the gram seeds you can easily split them in the two parts those are the two cotyledons okay now seeds may vary in size seeds may be small large the largest seeds are of those of coconut and one more thing on the basis of endosperm on the basis of endosperm if the seeds have endosperm we call them endospermic endospermic or the endospermic seeds are also known as albuminous albuminous you need to learn these terms albuminous or endospermic which have stored food in the form of endosperm or if there is no endosperm then it is called non endospermic or ex albuminous c non endospermic or ex albuminous in such seeds cotyledon store the food and they become thick and fleshy for example in dicots means where there are two cotyledons such as grams and peas mango you might be you might have seen raw mango inside the seed you can easily find two cotyledons okay mustard and monocot in monocot plants which have only one cotyledon they may also store the means uh, there will not be any endosperm but and uh, cotyledon will store the food for example valicinaria orchids amorphophallus okay now in basically in this chapter in your syllabus you have to study two seeds in detail one is dicot and one is monocot so dicot seed we are going to study the structure of the bean seed so let's say bean seed if you see it is somewhat kidney shaped having two sides the outer broad convex side and the concave side on the concave sides you can easily see one pore a small white scar like structure we call it hilum hilum is that structure which was originally the where the structure with which the ovule was attached with the ovary uh with the help of placenta now it becomes the hilum okay and just next to the hilum we have a pore micropyle if you remember micropyle the pore in the ovule from where the pollen tube makes way enters that same micropyle the hole which still persists and this micropyle helps to absorb water from here the seed absorb water and it also helps in the exchange of gases means to take oxygen and uh, or liberate of carbon dioxide during respiration from this pore okay then bean seed has two layers outer the testa two membranes and inner is tegmen testa is easily locatable you can easily see you can locate testa it is the brown covering after the seeds are soaked you can remove the brown covering outer covering that is called the testa outer membrane tegmen is uh, closely fused with testa it cannot be easily removed okay it has two membranes testa and tegmen and hilum the structure present from where the micropyle just below the hilum there is micropyle from where the water is absorbed okay see you can see here now in your diagram given in your book testa micropyle and this is the radical coming out so we will study now 
So seed coat consists of tester, the outermost hard brown brownish covering, and it protects the delicate inner parts. Seed coat's function is to protect the seed embryo from injury from mechanical shock, and uh, also attack of bacteria, fungi, and insects. And tegmin is a thin inner layer lying next to the tester. This is also protective. Then I told you about hilum. It is a distinct whitish oval scar on the concave side of the seed. It represents the spot where the ovule was attached to the ovary through the placenta. A tiny pore micropyle is situated close to the hilum. It marks the opening through through which the pollen tube had entered the ovule. Micropyle serves two functions. As I told you, one is absorption of water. and second is diffusion of the gases now if we open the seed coat remove the seed coat we will find that bean seed has two cotyledons on carefully separating the two cotyledons you can easily locate the embryo means on removing the seed coat after the soaking the seeds you can remove them and you will be able to locate the two cotyledons these are the two cotyledons and here you will be able to locate the plumule and this is the radical the radical which is going to form future root remember the embryo this is the embryo the embryo has two parts radical cle radical which will form the root afterwards and this is the plumule which will form the shoot okay this is the embryo very carefully you have to see otherwise it may break off so you can see in any of the seeds in gram seeds also after soaking you can remove the outer covering and then just split open the two cotyledons and you can see the embryo inside and find out the two parts plumule which will form the shoot and radical which will form the root so this is all about the bean seed now in the next video we will study about the maize grain thank you beta